Chapter 14 The earth was reaped Revelation 14 begins in heaven after the tribulation period is ended, but remember that the book of Revelation is not always in chronological order and bounces back and forth in time. The events of the seven-year period are actually described three or four different times, and from different vantage points, like the four Gospels describe the ministry of Christ. Revelation 14 verse 1 And I looked, and, lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Shown, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. A lamb stood on the Mount Shown, which Mount Shown is John talking about. Notice that it says, the Mount Shown, instead of just Mount Shown. There is a Mount Shown in Israel, but the Mount Shown here is the Mount Shown in heaven. Deuteronomy 4 verse 48, from Eror, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Shown, which is Hermon. Hebrews 12 verse 22, But ye are come unto Mount Shown, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, the one hundred and forty-four thousand have been caught up to heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation period in Revelation 12 verse 5, his father's name written in their foreheads, the seal of God that is placed in his one hundred and forty-four thousand servants, it is the name of the Father. YHVH is the Hebrew consonants that make up the name of God, pronounced YHVEH or YHVH. Satan has his counterfeit seal in Revelation 13 verse 17, where a person could have his name or his number written in their forehead. Revelation 14 verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. A voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters. Psalm 29 verse 3 The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. Revelation 14 verse 2 And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Revelation 19 verse 6 And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reignath. The voice of harpers, these are not angels. These are the 144,000 servants mentioned earlier, as you will see in the next verse. David played a harp in 1 Samuel 16 verse 16. The prophets on occasion used harps when prophesying. 1 Samuel 10 verse 5 After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp, before them, and they shall prophesy. 1 Chronicles 25 verse 3 of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, and Ziri, and Jeshiah, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, 6, under the hands of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord. Psalm 49 verse 4, I will incline mine ear to a parable, I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Revelation 14 verse 3, And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. A new song, these do not sing the song of Moses, but rather a new song which commemorates the latest trials that Israel and the world's believers will have faced during the tribulation period. This song is for the 144,000 only to sing and notice that they were redeemed from the earth. This happened at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Revelation 12 verse 5 Isaiah 42 verse 10 Sing unto the Lord a new song. The four beasts, Seraphim and Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3 The general class of angels does not have any wings at all. The seraphim have six while the cherub have only two. 1 Kings 6 verse 24, And five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub. From the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits. The number of cherubim in the Bible can be counted on one hand. Angels are always referred to as masculine in the Bible, never feminine. The elders, the four and twenty elders, from Revelation 4 verses 5 and 10, 5 colon 8, 14, 11, 16, and 19 colon 4. The 140 and 4,000, which were redeemed from the earth, the 144,000 are the man-child that was caught up at the midpoint of the tribulation in Revelation 12 verse 5. Revelation 14 verse 4, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. They which were not defiled with women, 
These witnesses are all Jewish men who have devoted themselves wholly to God's service during the first half of the tribulation. A Jewish young man who is not a virgin is not qualified to be one of the 144,000 because God will require these special young men to follow him wherever he goes. They cannot serve God as they are required to do if they have a wife that needs them during this terrible time. They will have responsibilities there that will disqualify them, and in a sense defile them, from being able to do this job. For they are virgins. When the scriptures are clear, we have no right to spiritualize them. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Jesus told his disciples while he was with them, that they had to forsake all, and come and follow him or they could not be his disciples. Luke 14 verses 26 to 27 If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Luke 14 verse 33 So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. These were redeemed from among men, Revelation 12 verse 5. Being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb, these 144,000 are the firstfruits of those that are redeemed in the tribulation period, which means they were the first, there were none before them. That means they ministered in the first half of the tribulation period, not the second. Leviticus 23 verses 10 to 20. Those who believe on Christ after the 144,000 are taken up will be the rest of the harvest. They are the innumerable multitude who get saved in the second half of the tribulation period. Leviticus 23 verses 10 to 20. What happens when the first fruits appear according to Leviticus 23? You would count seven weeks until Pentecost. At that time, you would put in the sickle. Revelation 14 verse 5 And in their mouth was found no guile for they are without fault before the throne of God. Psalm 32 verse 2, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. John 1 verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. 1 Peter 3 verse 10, For he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Guile, subtlety, deceit, craft, trickery. Revelation 14 verse 6 And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach. The next verse tells you what the angel preached. Revelation 14 verse 7 Saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. The everlasting gospel. There is no mention here of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ in this gospel that is preached. This is the everlasting gospel which will begin to be preached there at the end of the tribulation period as they cross into the new dispensation known as the kingdom age. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom solely to the lost sheep of the house of Israel during his earthly ministry. This angel, at the correct time, will preach the everlasting gospel which is the proper message for that particular time period. Today we preach the gospel of the grace of God, which was given to the Apostle Paul by revelation, and which can be clearly seen in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Acts 20 verse 24. The 144,000 witnesses will all preach the gospel of the kingdom as being at hand, just as the apostles were commissioned to do. The hour of his judgment is come, this is a reference to God's judgment against Babylon. Revelation 14 verse 8 And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Another angel, the first angel spoke of the good news that people needed to believe to go into their kingdom, while this angel spoke of what would happen to those who did not believe. The wine of the wrath of her fornication, Wine is used to intoxicate someone into doing something they would not normally if they were sober. Babylon has gotten all nations to become intoxicated with her wine, which was spiritual fornication, that would cause the nations to commit spiritual adultery by departing from God and worshipping false gods. Revelation 14 verses 9 to 10 And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. The third angel, this is the angel of the church of Pergamos, 
which could mean that the two preceding angels were the angels of the first two churches mentioned in Revelation 2. The world will still a few people left at this time in the tribulation period that have not yet chosen Christ, nor have received the mark of the beast, which is poured out without mixture, his wrath will not be diluted or softened any. The cup of his indignation, cups are often used prophetically to describe spiritual things related to suffering, like in Matthew 20 verse 22. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, the place of this torment is in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. Genesis 19 verse 24, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Psalm 11 verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and an horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup. Luke 17 verse 29, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Isaiah 30 verse 33, For Tophet is ordained of old, yeah, for the king it is prepared, he hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. Revelation 14 verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. Isaiah 30 verse 33. Revelation 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. The patience of the saints. This is for those Jews in the tribulation period, who will once again keep the commandments of God as they were commanded to do prior to the church age. During the dispensation of grace today, there is no difference between the Jew and Gentile, they are all one in Christ. During the tribulation period, God is dealing with Israel differently than he is dealing with us in the church. They that keep the commandments of God, 1 John 5 verses 2-3 By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God, and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. The faith of Jesus, they believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. 1 John 5 verses 4-5 For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Revelation 14 verse 13 And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. They may rest from their labors, their labors are the struggles they face. Revelation 2 verses 2 to 3, their works do follow them, the tribulation saints' works follow them into their kingdom, where they receive a reward. Revelation 22 verse 12, and, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. A sharp sickle, Revelation 14 verse 14, and I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. A white cloud, this is the only time the color white is associated with a cloud in the Bible, because of the person who is sitting upon it. Upon the cloud one sat, Christ is seen as sitting here, because the Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people according to Isaiah 3 verse 13. The time to plead will be over, while the time to judge will be just ahead when he will stand up, to mount his white horse, and return. Isaiah 3 verse 13, The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people, like unto the Son of Man, a title of Christ found in the Gospels, and in Ezekiel, ninety-three times. On his head a golden crown, Christ is seated on a white cloud, to receive the 144,000 unto himself. He is not standing, because he is not judging Israel yet. Isaiah 3 verse 13, In his hand a sharp sickle, this is the reaping that takes place at the end of the tribulation period, that is not the rapture of the church, which is Christ's body. Those who mix up Israel and the church, almost all eventually start to teach that they will go through the tribulation period, because they do not understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 I believe the Philadelphian church mentioned in chapter 3 will be involved in this tribulation rapture of mostly Jewish believers. The body of Christ, however, has been in heaven for many years already at this point, and does not go through any of the tribulation. We have not been appointed unto wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 14 verse 15 And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, 
for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Him that sat on the cloud, this is now the second of three times in all of the Bible that someone is said to be sitting on a cloud. The previous time is in the previous verse, and the final one is in the next verse. Three times helps us to remember that Jesus was not standing, yet. Isaiah 3 verse 13 above. Revelation 14 verse 16, And he that sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. He that sat on the cloud, three times in three consecutive verses, John emphasizes that Christ was sitting and not standing. His posture changing has a purpose. Revelation 14 verse 17, And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Two angels with sharp sickles reaping one after the other. Why? Why not at the same time? The reaping was to take place over seven weeks and culminate at Pentecost. The first angel gathers the first fruits, the second angel gathers the chaff. Leviticus 23 verses 10 to 20. Revelation 14 verse 18 And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, possibly the fourth angel in Revelation 16 verse 8. The clusters of the vine of the earth, they are the fruit on the vine. 1 Samuel 25 verse 18 Then Abigail made haste, and took two hundred loaves, and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and an hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. Song of Songs 7 verses 7 to 8 This thy stature is like to a palm tree, and thy breasts to clusters of grapes. I said, I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the boughs thereof. Now also thy breasts shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples. Revelation 14 verse 19 And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The vine of the earth, all the bad fruit that is to be destroyed. The great winepress of the wrath of God, the winepress was meant for wine, but if Israel would not produce good fruit in the vineyard that God gave to them, then he will reap them, and cast them into a winepress of his wrath. These are the chaff spoken of in Matthew 3 verse 12 that are cast into the fire and burned. Revelation 14 verse 20, And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. The winepress was trodden without the city, the city is Jerusalem, but the winepress is throughout the land, and without the city. And blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, this is how high the blood splatters from the ground upwards. Isaiah 63 verse 3 below, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, eighty miles in length, which covers a lot of central Israel. God's vineyard is Israel Isaiah 5 verses 1 to 7, Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard, that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes? And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard, I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned, nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds, that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant, and he looked for judgment, but behold oppression, for righteousness, but behold a cry. I have trodden the winepress alone, Isaiah 63 verses 1 to 6, Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Basra? this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling, in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold, therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, 
and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Chapter 15 Another sign in heaven, Revelation 15 verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Another sign in heaven, the previous sign is found in Revelation 12 verses 1 to 4, the man-child, great and marvelous, this term is used here, and in verse 3 just two verses later as part of the Song of Moses, which connects these sayings. Seven angels, the seven angels are the great and marvelous sign mentioned in verse 1. Seven last plagues, they begin to be poured out in chapter 16. Revelation 15 verse 2, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. As it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, it looked like a sea of glass. Revelation 4 verse 6, Mingled with fire, Exodus 9 verse 24, So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Revelation 8 verse 7, The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Them that had gotten the victory over the beast, these are tribulation saints, not us. The beast is the Antichrist. Revelation 11 verse 7. His image, an image of the Antichrist, for people to worship. Revelation 13 verse 14. His mark, the mark of the beast in Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18. The number of his name, Revelation 13 verse 17. Stand on the sea of glass, which tells you it is not a normal sea. The sea was like unto crystal. Revelation 4 verse 6. The harps of God, the tribulation saints will stand on the crystal sea with the harps of God, and they will be singing. Revelation 5 verse 8. David established 24 courses of priests. Some played harps, 2 Samuel 6 verse 5, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. 1 Chronicles 15 verse 16, And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps and cymbals, sounding, by lifting up the voice with joy. Revelation 15 verses 3 to 4, And they sing the song of Moses the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. The Song of Moses, this is found in Deuteronomy 32 verses 1 to 43, Revelation 15 verse 5, And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, the tabernacle of the testimony is speaking about the Ark of the Covenant which is the place that houses the ark where the tablets of the testament reside. Revelation 15 verse 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. The seven angels, these are the same angels mentioned as before. They are the messengers to the seven churches of chapters 2 and 3. The seven plagues, all are found in Revelation 16 verses 1 to 21. Clothed in pure and white linen, Jesus, these angels, and all the tribulation saints will be arrayed in white garments, but only Jesus and the angels will have their breasts girded with golden girdles. Revelation 15 verse 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. The four beasts, Seraphim and Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. The seven angels, these are the seven angels that served as messengers to the seven churches in Asia in chapters 2 and 3. Seven golden vials, the seven last plagues full of the wrath of God, as seen in the next chapters. Revelation 15 verse 8, And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God, and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. This also happened in Isaiah's day, when he saw the Lord sitting on the throne in the temple in heaven and the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 4, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts, 
The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. No man was able to enter into the temple, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. These begin to be poured out beginning in chapter 16. Chapter 16 The Vials of the Wrath of God Revelation 16 verse 1 And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The seven angels, these are the angels of the seven churches of Asia, found in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. The vials of the wrath of God, these are poured out in seven different places. Upon the earth, upon the sea, upon the rivers, and fountains of water, upon the sun, upon the seat of the beast, upon the great river Euphrates, and into the air. Revelation 16 verse 2 And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. The first went, this is the first angel identified as the angel of the church of Ephesus, and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore, like an ulcer. Revelation 16 verse 11. The men which had the mark of the beast, the sore falls only upon those who have the mark of the beast, his political supporters. Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18. God supernaturally protects those in the tribulation period who worship him, just as he promised he would in Mark 16 verses 15 to 18. Them which worshipped his image, this vial tormented his religious followers as well. Revelation 16 verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. The second angel, this is the angel of the church of Sardis, upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, this vial destroys one of mankind's best sources of provision in order to judge this Christ-rejecting world. The blood of a dead man coagulates. Just like the punishment upon Egypt prior to Israel's exodus, the sea turns to blood and everything in it dies, but God's people can drink poisonous things. Mark 16 verse 18. Revelation 16 verse 4, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. The third angel, this is the angel of the church of Pergamos, upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, once again God is slowly closing down man's abilities to fend for himself by poisoning the water supply, and yet man does not turn to God. The water becomes poisonous for men to drink. But what promise is given to believers in Mark 16 verses 15 to 18, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. This is not so under our dispensation today, but only for believing Israel under the gospel of the kingdom message, and only when the kingdom is at hand as it will be in the tribulation period. Matthew 24 verse 14, Revelation 16 verses 5 to 6, And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Exodus 7 verses 17 to 25 Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink and the Egyptians shall loathe thee to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood, throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood, and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod, and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood, and the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled, after that the Lord had smitten the river. Revelation 16 verse 7 And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. I heard another out of the altar, another angel. Revelation 8 verses 3 to 5 and 14 18. Revelation 16 verse 8 And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. The fourth angel, 
This is the angel of the church in Thyatira. Upon the sun, intense heat surrounds the earth as God seeks to get men's attention because they resisted the 144,000 witnesses, as well as the two witness testimony previously, and now they even begin to blaspheme God. They are getting a little taste of what is ahead for them in hell. Revelation 16 verse 9, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, this is possibly them using Jesus' name blasphemously. Revelation 16 verses 10 to 11, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. The fifth angel, this is the angel of the church of Smyrna. Upon the seat of the beast, Satan wants Jerusalem more than any other city, and Paul tells us that he will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We do know that the beast rules over a ten-nation kingdom, and we learned in chapter 3 that Satan's seat will be in Pergamos initially. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 4 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is, worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God, and his kingdom was full of darkness. The ninth plague in Egypt was a plague of darkness that lasted three days. Egypt did nothing because the darkness was so thick. They could not see a thing, but the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The same thing will happen again here for the believing remnant during this time. Exodus 10 verses 21 to 23, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. They gnawed their tongues for pain, the only thing they had to do during those three days was to endure the constant thirst from the lack of clean water, and the pain from the heat, and the grievous sores sent by the angels from the vials of God's wrath. Revelation 16 verse 12 And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The sixth angel, this is the angel of the church of Philadelphia, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. A similar thing was said by Rahab the harlot about the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. Joshua 2 verse 10, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side Jordan, Sion, and O.G., whom ye utterly destroyed, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared, the kings of the east will launch an all-out attack. Of course, the goal spiritually is for Satan to destroy Israel, which is now in captivity, but he will try for domination of the whole region and every victory he enjoys will be short-lived. Revelation 16 verses 13 to 14 And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Three unclean spirits like frogs, the satanic trinity will seek to destroy as much life as possible in one final battle, in which all the armies of the world will meet to destroy these invaders from the east. The spirit of devils, working miracles, the satanic trinity mentioned above can also do signs and wonders to such a level that kings of the earth will wonder after them and follow them into battle, and ultimately to their deaths. A parenthetical warning Revelation 16 verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. I come as a thief, God admonishes the saints that remain during the tribulation period to watch and to keep their garments. This implies there is a responsibility to this class of believers to keep their garments that is never said to anyone ever in church age. Matthew 24 verses 36 to 51, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24, 1 Peter 3 verse 10, Revelation 3 verse 3 and 6 12. Blessed is he that watcheth, and keepeth his garments. Revelation 3 verse 4 and 3 18 below. Revelation 3 verse 18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, 
and anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 16 verse 16 And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Armageddon, this is the world's most perfect battlefield, and it has been the host of many of the world's battles. Satan's army will be utterly destroyed here, with no casualties on God's side. This is the valley at the center of the world, where three continents come together. Revelation 16 verse 17 And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. The seventh angel, this is the angel of the church of Laodicea, poured out his vial into the air, it is mentioned in verse 21 as the plague of hail. It is done. These three words are used together seven times. Six are in the book of the Revelation. Five of the times this saying is used to describe God speaking. The other two times it was used about God. Deuteronomy 5 verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. Revelation 1 verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. Revelation 11 verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Revelation 16 verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Revelation 19 verse 1, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation, and glory, and honor, and power, unto the Lord our God. Revelation 21 verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 16 verse 18, And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. Babylon, mystery Babylon, and all of those that have ever lifted their hand against the Lord and his anointed, shall pay for their rebellion. There were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, this is now the fourth time these three words are used together. A pattern has been developing with them that we need to see. Exodus 19, Revelation 4, 5, 8, 5, and 11, 19. There was a great earthquake. The great city is rebuilt Babylon, and it is prophesied to be destroyed by God in Jeremiah 49 to 50. Isaiah 2 verses 19 to 22 and Revelation 6 verse 12. Isaiah 2 verses 19 to 21, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver, and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks, and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Revelation 16 verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. This verse can be confusing if you do not read it slowly, first it speaks of Jerusalem, then all the cities of the nations, then great Babylon. The two greats are not the same city. The great city was divided into three parts, this great city is Jerusalem, God's city, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, the great, notorious city of Babylon, Satan's city, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, Revelation 14 verse 10, Revelation 16 verse 20, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, Revelation 6 verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Revelation 16 verse 21, And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. The weight of a talent, a hundred pounds Exodus 9 verse 18, Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof even until now.